An enemy will almost never be anything except an enemy. All one can do with an enemy is defeat him. But an adversary can sometimes become an ally. There is a cost, of course. In all things in life, there is a cost. In dealing with an adversary, sometimes the cost is paid in power or position. Sometimes it is paid in pride or prestige. Sometimes the cost is greater. Sometimes the risk is one's future or even one's life. You've never heard of the Millennium Fall? Should I have? It's a ship that made the Kessel Run in less than 12 months. Welcome to Kessel Run Weekly. My name is Danny. And I'm Heather. All right, guys. And so, really excited because uh, for those of you who have joined us, I know, Elizabeth, you've been with us from the beginning. Um, we have our Holocron Book Club for Thrawn. Real quick. If my dog does something crazy, you hear something, I, it, it happens. I'm very sorry. But anyways, but we are talking about Thrawn. We have been since May, I think. Long time. Yeah, long time. Long uh, I feel like almost since we really started getting this thing going. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> uh, That's what it's literally been. <laughs> uh, right? Exactly. <laughs> no, it hasn't been that long. Yeah, we got a couple people watching. Cool. cool. Thank you guys for... Uh, joining us um but yeah so we're we had a little break for the month um because we both went on vacation had some fun right so yes breathing absolutely so how was your vacation heather amazing um sun the pool um daiquiris and (laughs) friendship so nice i didn't have any kids for two weeks no dogs i just sat by a saltwater pool and relaxed. That's awesome. Yours. You were I by can't... a saltwater thing, too. I was, I was, yeah. Um, me and my family went down to Fort Morgan um, in Alabama for the weekend, or kind of, yeah, it was like four or five days. Yeah. Um, really awesome. Normally, I hate the ocean. Me and the ocean had a good time this time. Nice. <laughs> we, we were friends this time. The sun, however... Did not like me, and I came back with some souvenirs from the sun. Did you? Um, See, I, I, did. I got my 100% SPF. And, <laughs> or my 100 SPF, yeah. Well, and see, Kristen had packed up a bunch. Like, I'm, I'm not even kidding. She had, like, a cache of sunscreen. Because, <laughs> I mean, she's a ginger, so she gets the worst of it. She actually, she, she still got burned a little bit, but not quite as bad as I did. Because I was like, oh, I don't need sunscreen. It's overcast. It's cloudy. <laughs> the sun's not out. Apparently that's the worst time to do it. Yeah, so. I could I could tell you the science behind that, but we can do that later. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I got pretty burnt on that, but uh, it was just relaxing. It was really cool. Um, just got to sit on the beach for like hours at a time and just relax. It was great. It was awesome. It's the first time I've ever had a good experience at the beach. So. <laughs> this was my first kidless vacation for I think twelve years. Mm-hmm. Oh, there you go. Sounds like you needed it. <laughs> I did. I really, really did. Well, cool. And, and oh, go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> well, no, I, all I was going to say is thank you guys for uh, being patient with us throughout the month because I know that um, we took a break from Holocron and everything, our book club, um, to just chill and unwind. So we appreciate you guys letting us do that. And I know you had a bunch of episodes to enjoy because we had a lot of fun making those with our Ladies of Force series that we just wrapped up. That was awesome, right? It was. I really liked it. It was a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed having the guests that we did. Um, Stephanie from Superpower Fancast. Um, she joined us. It was really, really fun. Um, we had uh, Michelle uh, at Ahsoka X Tano on Instagram. Uh, she was able to join us as well for our latest one, the Sabine and Ahsoka uh, episode, um, which was really cool. I think, like, I listened back on that episode and man, I ramble. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt like I did, um, but yeah, but it was still fun. I still enjoyed it a lot, and and Michelle is really cool. Um, if you're watching, thank you so much for joining us on the show, Stephanie as well. Thank you guys so much. We hope to have you back for sure. Definitely, um, definitely. Um, and so now I think that's enough stalling for now. I think we got enough people. Yeah, it looks like a couple people joining us watching. So cool, cool. 
So, you ready to dive into this thing? I am indeed. Because we got like a super episode. Yeah, so because it's three we episodes in one. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's not going to be that no, long. No, that long. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just a lot of information. Uh, it is, it is. But there were a lot of high points, a lot of cool stuff in it. But we're going to cover chapters 22, because we left off at 21, to the epilogue. So, 22 to the epilogue, to the end, guys. And it's sad to see it go. It, wah, wah. Wah, wah. Um, real quick before we go in, I did notice something. I don't know. I, I got to find out more information on it, but apparently the Thrawn Marvel comic that's coming is supposed to be an adaptation of the book. Ah, nice. Which I would love to see that. Yes. <laughs> see, if we would have waited a longer, we just had pictures. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I could have put one over my... Hey, there you go. <laughs> Thrawn could have been talking. Definitely. And I'm I'm excited about that. I mean, I'm going to collect it, even though I have the book. I mean, right. The vis- I, I could just imagine, like, the whole time I was reading it, the, the visuals, I'm sure, are insane. Um, and we'll actually get into some of those battles here coming up uh, on the show. Yes. So cool. Yes. Awesome. All right, guys. So let's go ahead and dive in. So we had chapters 23 through the epilogue. Um, first off, in the last episode, um, I think that we were just starting to find out a little bit more about Night Swan and Thrawn's um, kind of starting to deduce what's going on in these chapters. We finally get his identity. Yay! Yes. It all comes spilling out. Yes, it does. Um, now, uh, for those of you who don't know and are just joining us, this is spoiler filled. So if you intend on reading the book and spoilers bother you, please pause, come back to us later, come talk with us. We'll be here. <laughs> you can always uh, email go us back or anything. And yeah. Read the chapters and then listen to each episode. Whatever you want to do. Definitely, definitely. So, go ahead and with the spoilers. Night Swan is Signe. I know. From, from one of the earlier uh, uh, chapters that we had. I mean, like from the like the first few chapters, I think. Yeah, and you were disappointed about that. I was very disappointed in that. <laughs> now, not so much as it started to develop, because he ended up becoming, like, he kind of started showing how formidable he was. Yes. Um, and how capable he was. Um, but I, when it came up to where it was, oh, it's Signy, I was like, really, though? That guy? I mean... <laughs> I almost, like, spit out my tea. <laughs> I mean, I just, I was kind of like... I don't know. Like, I was hoping for something huge, and then it was like, oh, yeah, it's the smuggler dude who uh, stole the Tabana gas. I was like, okay, I guess. But, like, when he kind of, they did the whole um, hero villain deduce my master plan kind of thing, uh, that whole exposition in right. in the middle of a field, um, it started to make sense. Um, and I could actually see where he was kind of step for step with Thrawn. Um, even so far as where he starts talking about on the ship where he said, oh, I allowed you that uh, buzz droid because I right. didn't want them to kill you. And Thrawn was like, I mean, even if you didn't, I had one on the hole. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, thanks anyways, but I'm good. <laughs> and then he was like, <laughs> I thought exactly. I had you on that one. <laughs> it was almost like he was like, be gracious to me. I saved you. And Thrawn's like, nah, dude, I'd have been good if you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I'm it's a like big I already boy. I can that. take care of myself. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, so what was your uh, thoughts on the See, reveal of Night Swan? See, yeah, I was kind of glad that it wasn't already an epic character. Okay, um, in a way, because to me, it he was different, and you know, we got to see that we don't always succeed. You know, and. Sometimes even people with the best intentions and everything like we saw in Rogue One mm-hmm. can be destroyed based on their principles. Because he could Definitely. have gone to the Chiss um, ascendancy. ascendancy too. Mm-hmm. And he was offered that position and he turned it down because he had to save people. I thought right. it was amazing. Yeah. And I, I mean, thought it, it, that... In order for him to have full Thrawn at all, even, I mean, because he came into contact with him and Thrawn really didn't think it was him for a while. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean, he really did fool him for 
quite a while. And, oh, yeah. Um, he played games with him. You know, how much power does Signy have that he can keep him out of, uh, Eli out of promotions? And, mm-hmm. I mean... I mean, he had his tendrils and everything, really. He did. <laughs> um, which was wild because, I mean, even in the, the ending exposition where he's like, oh, yeah, I planned this, this, and this, and this. And he's like, well, why did you help the bad guys? Oh, well, I did it so they'd get caught because I knew you'd find that. I knew you'd catch them with, uh, I think it was the shells or mm-hmm. something like that. Yeah, uh, the oyster shells or whatnot. Um, but, like, I didn't really, I really wasn't on board with it being Signy. Like, I was really let down until that conversation between them um, on Baton or Baton. I'm not sure how you say it. Um, but the planet that they were on in the end um, where he was going through going, yeah, I did this, 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 and this. And basically here's my master plan. This is what I'm going to do. And then Thrawn's like, okay, you know, a little something that's cool. You're pretty good at what you do. Um, I'm going to offer you a job. <laughs> and that actually kind of took me back. I was like, really? Yeah. Um, which, which kind of throws off the whole thing where I was, uh, or I think where you and I had talked in an earlier episode about how that we, we were talking about how Thrawn, isn't truly evil um well to a degree (laughs) um he has his own agenda he's cold but Mm -hmm. his strategic he's strategic his Mm -hmm. idea of being a good person is to save the most lives that can Mm -hmm. and his people still calculated by numbers exactly so Mm -hmm. um he feels that by helping the Empire, he's actually saving people. And mm-hmm. he's he's there, and he found out about the Death Star. He found out about stuff, and he's going to try to fix it. That's what he's, mm-hmm. you know, he's staying so that he can see what he can do. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I loved when he found that out, though, where he called the Emperor on it. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, that was great. He's like, so, yeah, so your Death Star. He's like, where did you learn that name? It's like, hold on. He's like, oh, we won't need all of this because the Death Star will keep it all peace and da-da-da-da. And I could just see Thrawn being like, yeah, right, whatever, okay. I'm just going to let the Chiss Ascendancy know that you're an idiot and this is what's happening. Yeah. And so, <laughs> to be on the watch for you because you're insane. <laughs> so now I'm really wanting to know what Season 4 is going to be. Oh, my gosh, Yes. Because this now sets that up I finished so much. this book, I have to mm-hmm. watch season three again. I'm gonna have mm-hmm. to watch season four. I have to know. Oh yeah, definitely. We we, we may want to try doing that because uh, I actually thought about that too when when I finished the book because uh, I finished the last few chapters just last night just so I could be fresh on it. And the first thing I thought of, I need to rewatch Rebels. Mm-hmm. I was like, it has to happen. It has to happen uh, because this is a, a completely different Thrawn because Rebels, and it's not necessarily that Rebels misrepresents Thrawn, but it's, so. it, he's the big bad. He's the villain. And because we know him as the empire and the empire, the bad guys, all that kind of stuff. But this book gives you a different dimension and you get to see Thrawn's true intention where right. it's not necessarily, he's a, the, the clear cut villain. Uh, and he's not necessarily the clear cut good guy. He knows what's right and wrong, and depending on how it serves his purposes, he knows that he needs to save as much people, as many people as he can. He knows that that's part of his directive, but at the same time, it's what serves him. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's why he was looking into the Death Star and all this other kind of stuff, um, tracking the Dunium shipments and everything, which, like, the whole time all of that was playing out where he was like, oh, I see this and I see this. I was like, please let it be the Death Star. Please let it be the Death oh, Star. Oh, you knew it, it be the Death Star. Because <laughs> it's like one more thing to tie it all in together. Um, and it's just, it, it's it's completely just awesome. I mean, I, I was, even though I knew where it was going and I had a feeling of where it was going, when it actually happened and he called the Emperor out on it, I, I, I was so, uh, I fanboyed. I really did. did <laughs> I you was like, ah, a little bit, Danny. A little. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was awesome. But I did want to ask you one thing. So um, we found out also that Thrawn was not banished. That yep. everything was done on purpose. He's almost a spy. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Like he's borderline. I mean, he's not borderline. He pretty much is a spy <laughs> for and the Chiss. He assistant. meets Vader in the end, and mm-hmm. Anakin's the one that put him there. So how's that going to work saying. out? Because he said a Jedi general, and then there was the earlier mention of him meeting General Skywalker. So that's where I was wondering. Now, that was my that... implication. Yeah. Well, I want to know why Anakin put him there. Um, like, I don't really. Because uh, I don't think it really explains. Oh, well, he said it took him three times before he finally got somebody to come. Yeah. Before he finally, you know, mm-hmm. was able to get somebody. So, I think that, that he just saw what was coming, maybe, mm-hmm. and one, he thought this was the only, you know, a back mm-hmm. way to get there. But I really don't know. I was confused about that too. Yeah, I, I will. I want to see that story. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, in the uh, in the Marvel adaptation, maybe we'll get an expansion on that because I want to know how it was that Anakin came across Thrawn and was like, "Yeah, I'll I'll help you. I'll leave you here." And then that's part of all of that, which I'm sure it wasn't as clear cut as that because no. nothing with Thrawn ever is. Well, they fought <laughs> together. I mean, yeah, they talked about the Clone Wars, and you know, mm-hmm. Thrawn saw the destruction of the war Mm -hmm. and um, as bad, like he said, as bad as the empire is, it's, it's a power vacuum. You, Mm -hmm. you cut somebody out like a cancer and something else is going to grow there. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Which is kind of cool foreshadowing for the first order. Exactly. (laughs) Um, And we'll get to see a lot of that to my understanding in battlefront too, which will be really cool because Inferno squad came out today. Well, when, when if you're not watching the live, it'll be Tuesday. Yes. But <laughs> um, but yeah, Inferno Squad came out today. The novelization for Battlefront Two, um, which is pretty exciting. Yes, it is. That that, that <laughs> I got seven books for my birthday, and even, uh, well, Star Wars books. I actually yeah. got a lot more. <laughs> That's the shelf. But yes. um. Yeah, uh, you know it's been a good birthday if you have to redo your bookshelf. Right. <laughs> but yeah, that that just wasn't one of them. And now I'm like, hmm. <laughs> one more, one more, maybe one more. No, be good. I've got, right. <laughs> I've got reading for months, so I should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like, all of it, I love how all of this is starting to really tie together. Yeah. Um, because I mean, it's not like Thrawn, the Thrawn novel ever felt like it was outside of anything. It's not like it felt like, oh, this doesn't belong here. I mean, it was interconnected the whole time, but for it to rewrote into the Death Star and then you have Rogue One, I want to know if Thrawn ever met Galen. That would be cool. That would be cool. Just to kind of, cause I mean, I would imagine that with him having knowledge of the Death Star now being a grand admiral, um, at the end of everything, I would imagine he'd ha- he'd be privy to some of that um, okay. because generally, well, uh, Wolf Yularen is in A New Hope. So, I mean, he was privy to that too. He was on that main council. I mean, obviously we didn't see a Chiss in A New Hope, but I mean, I would sure have been awesome. But <laughs> <laughs> after the fact, um, special edition. No, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do Leave that. Leave them alone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, I mean, just... Him finding out about everything is just really, I, I love it. it. It made me so happy. Um, so, and, and Eli has a happy ending. Thanks for scaring me to death the whole time. Well, I could have, <laughs> like, totally ruined it for you. That's true. That would the have ruined it. The whole time you're sitting there going, I want to see the chiz. I want to see the chiz. And I'm like, <laughs> that's why yeah. I hate spoilers. That's true. <laughs> I try to keep trailers and stuff away, like, away from you. But unless it's Porgs. Unless it's Porgs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, those are everywhere right now. There's nothing you can do. There was nothing I could have done. <laughs> you might as well just go ahead and watch the behind I'm the scenes. I'm going to. Yep. <laughs> um, yeah, they're going to be the next little Furby, for sure. That's that's going to be insane. That's this th- This yeah. Christmas. That's this a Christmas. totally different episode. That is. Um, I'm trying to see, so... I want to talk about Arenda. Mm-hmm. 
Unless Let's anybody about has any questions. Oh, well, that's why I was going to actually check the feed real quick because Elizabeth has uh, left some comments for us. Yay! Um Quite a quite a while back, but uh, my our bad, Elizabeth. Well, my Oops. bad. I'm yeah, the one running this bad. thing. I'm not even looking at Facebook. <laughs> um, but she said uh, she commented on here uh, that was awesome when Thrawn found out about the Death Star. I completely agree. Tis awesome. Um, and then she said I dropped my book when I read that he wasn't banished and it was all a ploy uh, to basically check out the Empire. Right. Yes. That was awesome. I got chills when that happened. I was in um, the pool and I went, mm -hmm. Oh my! <laughs> and my friend goes, what are you... Right? <laughs> and I was like, sorry. <laughs> my bad. <laughs> um, but I mean, like, that, to me, like, because I, I mean, obviously we knew that Thrawn was already a planner. He was the strategic master and all this other kind of stuff. And we're like, oh, yeah, well, he, he I mean, it's almost, it almost kind of plays out like a foresight um, right. because he's so good at it. It's crazy. But to hear that it, from the very beginning, page one, that's what it's been this entire time. It's just like world's greatest spy. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I mean, thought he was playing a game in the beginning. I did. Yeah. I mean, I told you that. I, I didn't just, expect that, though. Yeah. I got to the point where I thought, no, surely not. You know, mm -hmm. I, it left my mind, and I was, mm -hmm. no, he, he was. He was playing a game. The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> but I liked how they uh, they covered with um, Eli why he kept Eli around. Yes, where where he where, how he was talking about how that he saw something in him because it, it wasn't the plan, but it turned into this. Right, and he was like, it was something that was to my benefit. Right, and well, it's also he, something he, he recognized from him. He yeah, started because of the you know the whole him knowing. Mm -hmm. you know, Sabisti at all, Sabisti. Right. But, and trying to see if he was a spy on him, mm -hmm. you know, and then <laughs> he fell in love with him. So. Yeah, basically, yeah. Because, um, I mean, he ended up seeing what Eli couldn't see in himself. Right. Uh, and, and I love that transformation. Like, even it even goes through where you, you see, it's like, I think it's like a page or page and a half, something like that, where Eli's just talking about how, well, the, Thrawn's plan's obvious. Obviously, right. you would do this. This is, do you not see it? And uh, I think it was the commander or something like that. She's like, no, no one else would, but we do because we know him. Right. He's trained us and everything. And then all of a sudden it becomes just open to him like, oh my gosh, he taught me. <laughs> and it's just, it was, it's wild. And it was cool because like, uh, and again, going back to you scaring me half to death with Eli, because I loved him to death. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like I thought it was going to be a thing of when his usefulness is over, he's cut. Yeah. But I mean, Thrawn was mentoring him. Like, how cool is that? It is. And I like, love I thought, his command yeah. style. We open mm -hmm. up in chapter 22 to his command style. And this is right. really the first time we get to see him in full command. Mm -hmm. And the Empire doesn't command like that. No, <laughs> they they don't care what you think. They're just gonna do it. Yeah, and it makes me wonder. These people once Thrawn is gone. Mm -hmm. It it made me wonder. Like they're gonna have to move on to their own ships, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, they're gonna get in trouble because they're gonna be all mouthy and <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and then they're gonna say it was Thrawn. Exactly. <laughs> Blame it on the chips. <laughs> it's all his fault um but i mean and i can see like and what's cool it's cool that you mentioned that because i can see with all of them like commander Fer commander pharaoh mm -hmm. and uh all the other ones who are starting to get used to his command when they do get promoted because he's he's still teaching them he's mentoring them too can you imagine what his fleet will look like because you know he's going to be over i mean he's over a fleet uh, right. i mean he's grand admiral and so teaching everybody under him, hey, this is what you do, get promoted out from under him, all that kind of stuff. It, it's just replicating him over right. and over again. And it, could, and it makes them better. It could make a difference eventually mm -hmm. if he stays in long enough and he does it the way he, you mm -hmm. know, he wants to do it. Yeah. Well, and a true leader is supposed to produce leaders. And I feel like that's exactly what he does. So... 
Which I, is I love, different uh, than yeah. the command style we usually see in the NBA. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Definitely. I'm, 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 I know I'm like fanboying, fanboying out over Thrawn. Like, I just like, it, it, like it, I know, right? <laughs> well, it's just, it's, it's so cool because, I mean, you, you don't see that. And, and the fact that he is technically our villain, the one that's opposing the rebels and everything, I mean, e even still, he still doesn't technically serve the Empire. And I want to see that come to play. Like, Filoni, let's see the Chiss Ascendancy before you go, please. Because, <laughs> I mean, that would be insane because, I mean, the whole thing was played out like he is part of the Empire. Like, he is for the Empire. Empire's interests, all that kind of stuff. And some of the stuff he doesn't get, fine. But for it to re be revealed in the very end that... It has nothing to do with the Empire. It's all about the preservation of the Chiss Ascendancy. Right. And it's just like, okay, cool. <laughs> it's like, not only are you a double agent, but now you're a triple agent. Well, <laughs> and, and he's worried just kinda... about the galaxy, too. I mean, he's worried yeah. about, you know, his people, but, mm -hmm. you know, he is worried about the, the, the mass number of people. Exactly. Yeah. Everything is still calculated. And I love that about his character, yes. that even though he does care for or he knows he should care for civilian life and it does bother him when that is that line is crossed because um, you can see that with everything with Arenda. Oh, we're getting there. <laughs> yes. Um, so getting to that, actually, you said you want to go ahead and talk about Arenda. I do. I want to talk, talk about, about Arenda because this whole time she has been nothing but a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. And when she kills her first person in a battle of, you know, adrenaline and fear, mm -hmm. it's like, she just... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a huge jump from one person to an entire... entire building. Building. Yeah, <laughs> island. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like, she, I mean, she definitely she did escalated. That on purpose. I mean, mm -hmm. she said that she might not have meant to do it. She might not have realized that it would have been that bad, but meh. Oh, well, I got what I wanted. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, exactly. Uh, wow. <laughs> it's, it, that, to me, is cold and calculated. Oh, yeah. Right, and, and that was the thing, is I never thought that I would see, I guess, in, in my opinion... Arenda worse than Thrawn. Because, mm, because I, I mean, in, in I know that she's cold. I know that she's detached. Because we get that in the Rebel series, mm -hmm. where where you see that from her that it's just one way, her way or no way. But at the same time, like for her, like you said, to go from one person to an entire island, <laughs> and then just and literally when Thrawn confronts her about it, she's just like, "What are you gonna do? You need me." You're not going to do anything about it. You're just going to let it go. Like basically tells him what's going down. This is what's going on. And he's just like, you're right. I have no evidence. No. Can't do it. <laughs> I am so, yeah. waiting to see how that's going to play out in Rebels. I know I keep bringing uh -huh. up Rebels, but it's like they're all, you know, I'm waiting to see mm -hmm. how that's because he's going to, because they're both in there. Mm-hmm. And I keep thinking they're going to reference this at some point, but they might not be able to. That's true. Because the story is not really about Arenda and Thrawn. Right. It's more of the rebel side. And I do want to see more from Thrawn, though. Um, I think that that would be warranted for sure, uh, with them exploring a little bit more about the just Ascendancy, or at least even mentioning that. Right. Um, but then there's the thing of, I only feel like that would happen if we actually saw his downfall. Well, I do think we're going to see his downfall, but. That's, okay. Yeah. We, we went over that in another <laughs> episode. Yeah. <I> think. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know. Like I, I would like to see his end of some kind, even right. though I don't want to see him go because for whatever reason, I got feels for the Thrawn. <laughs> I actually care for this guy. Oh my gosh, I got that song stuck in my head now. <laughs> yeah, I'm you good? good? I almost sang it. I'm, I'm, I'm good oh. now. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, but I mean, like, 
I like that you can see Thrawn is not just a, or he's not necessarily your typical villain. That right. it's more of he's an adversary um, than just evil for the sake of evil. Because it's not for the sake of evil. It's for the preservation of his people. And, I and that's what's that cool. And I is that. She mm-hmm. is the baddie. She, oh, yeah. She doesn't care. She's like, 110%, yeah. So I really like that. Oh, definitely. I like that that was a, a cool little twist a whole island of people not that uh, i like uh, the, yeah. uh, <laughs> that sounded <laughs> awful <laughs> but it was a nice little story you know when she hit that button and the whole thing mm-hmm. went down and wow even her parents were stunned at it like i don't think they, they didn't know that it was her daddy um, did ah uh, see i didn't catch that daddy turned around looked at her and went with his mm. daddy eyes I'm sure. <laughs> he did that twice. He did it with when he found out that she had killed the guy mm-hmm. previously, the guard. And mm-hmm. he did it again because he knew something was up with her when the whole island went boom. Yeah. Arinda, Arinda, Arinda. <laughs> but I, I definitely want to see that play out somehow. But I don't know that we've really seen Price a whole lot. I don't think we just saw her a whole lot in season four. It was more centered around Thrawn. Three. So it's more likely. Yeah. Um, it's more likely that we'll see Thrawn play out more than Price um, in season four, uh, which I would be I would be perfectly fine with. Because um, if it is his end, then we need to let his motives be known. Right. <laughs> that needs to be found and and things like that. Um I it just it has to happen. <laughs> I hope that you know his name gets cleared and everything before four is done because those that have not read the book have no mm-hmm. idea that he's not horrible. Right. <laughs> Cuz I mean like he like again he's just the big bad. That I mean that's what he is in the TV show but it is so much more depth to him. Right. Um and this being my first Star Wars canon book I am so happy this was my first one. <laughs> I am so happy I got to share it with you, and I talked oh, yes. you into reading it. Oh, definitely. <laughs> it was awesome. Um, let me see. I'm going to check the comments here real quick. Um, Elizabeth says, Thrawn is a great character with a lot of depth to him, um, and that I think her parents were pretty shocked by her behavior at the end. So she's right there with you. Yes, I agree. Because I thought it was just because of the sheer horror of what happened. Um, not necessarily directed at her. So I, I must have missed that. Daddy was giving yeah. her the look. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. Um, I, I, I have a feeling he probably knew what she really was. Um, he didn't until mm-hmm. the end. That's for sure. He found out for he sure. Found out. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, so I'm trying to think if there's anything else. We had the Jeffy confrontation with the governor yes. earlier in that, which was really cool to see. Oh, yeah. So the starship battles. So that actually brings that up for me. Um, so th- with the, starting with the Jeffy con- confrontation with governor, I'm not sure what his name is. <laughs> um, governor, Mr. Steal Your Art. Um, <laughs> uh, with, with all that, like, that was really cool how he deduced where he was. Because when he saw him on the hollow thing and everything, he, he saw him in a room with the art behind him, all that kind of stuff, and trying to make it seem like he's on planet. Right. He's like, fine, fire on the planet. Do this. Do your worst. And Thrawn's just like, yeah. calm down. <laughs> <laughs> so give it a second. And then he he sees literally deduces through the entire thing that it wasn't the Jeffy that had anything to do with it, that it was totally him trying to steal their art by watching a ship twitch. That was the coolest. It was like, uh, flyby, there you are. <laughs> yes. And I liked that it brought up why he would have known what the Calicori was. Because mm-hmm. he is an art consort. Mm-hmm. Definitely. He, he sees a lot of story and a lot of um, just history in them. creativity, yeah. history, mm-hmm. you know, environment. A lot of stuff based on mm-hmm. the art. Definitely. It's really, really cool seeing how he deduces all that. Um, because, I mean, 
just I, I think he actually mentions that early in the back in, in the book that to, that you have to know one's culture to truly know them. Um, something to that effect where he's learning about uh, the people that he's under command and learning about the different places that he's going to and things like that. Uh, it helps him in his conflicts. Right. Um, it's part of his tactical analysis and most people would find that useless. They would. They <laughs> but, would. But, They'd find it useless and a waste mm-hmm. of time to spend 13 right. hours studying Jeffy Art. Right. Um, but it worked out for him. It did. And I, I love how quick the, that governor's uh, tone changed as well, where he was just like, so uh, we know you're stealing the art. Da, da, da. He's like, but it, but it's worth millions. Um, I, can, I can cut you a check. You can be in on this. <laughs> and uh, Thrawn's like, nah, you're coming off. <laughs> like, got him. I, I, was, I, I was impressed, as always. Um, but then even to the final battle, where even Yularen questions him. I thought that was very interesting because it was a very risky move with the, uh, because in uh, just kind of recapping because in, in the battle prior to when Thrawn goes and actually meets Night Swan on the planet, um, Night Swan disables two of the Star Destroyers, two of the three that are there. The Chimera is the only one that's operational. And so I think it's the, 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 the Chirac and something, Eben, Tubbin, I don't know. Something weird. It, it was a strange name, like Flubber. I don't know. <laughs> we'll just uh, call it Flubber. That's yeah, we'll the, the Shyrak and the Flubber. <laughs> um, but they were both disabled. Uh, the only thing on them, they had auxiliary weapons. They could communicate. Well, I think communications may have been down too. Um, but so Thrawn positions them in a way to where, from Yularen's perception, um, he's like, that leaves them wide open to attack. Somebody could jump in, take them out, make off with a Star Destroyer, what in the world are you doing? And nobody saw the picture except for Thrawn. Exactly, exactly. Eli didn't even notice it to the last second. Yeah. Um, Because all of them were like, man, you're leaving them wide open. Why why would you do that? And you've got all these uh, repair barges that are trying to repair them and everything. He's like, well, what if it doesn't work out? What if this? What if this? And then lo and behold, somebody breaks out of hyperspace and there's a fleet coming in. Um, after the Star Destroyers, just like you, Lauren, said there would be. Mm-hmm. But there was a twist. I I literally out loud screamed yes when this happened. <laughs> uh, I scared my wife to death. It was Visual, amazing. Danny. <laughs> um, but like when it happened, I was just like, yes, I was so excited. Um, but like with the cargo, with the cargo um, repair cargo ship things, mm-hmm. they were holding TIE fighters squadrons of TIE fighters yep. from actually the guy that he kind of screwed over with that tried the attack the first time. Yep. I was like, what? And so it was just like, wait for it. And boom. Like, can you just imagine the visual of seeing those emerge from places they should not emerge like, like, <laughs> out I of nowhere? A whole bunch of spiders coming out of a hole. Yeah. Like, it's a big swarm. Just yeah. A swarm of like gnats yeah. or something. Because <laughs> I mean, it's it's insane because he, he it blows my mind, and that was that's one thing that I absolutely I mean, of many that I love about this book is that Thrawn knows the end before the beginning, or at right. the beginning rather, he knows the outcome before he ever gets to that. And again, it goes to that where it seems like it almost gives him kind of a foresight to everything. Right. He's prepared for things that nobody thought was coming, or everybody necessarily knew was coming, but he prepared for it because it was just looked like a, a normal, Oh, well, we're going to repair these star destroyers where everybody's getting the, getting everything under control on the surface and you know, no big deal. Oh wait, tie fighters. <laughs> so like, it was just, it, it was so cool. I, I, I love that. That was actually, I would call that probably my favorite moment of the book <laughs> where that happened. Cause I could just imagine I really it. Really awesome. that. I really yeah. like that chapter. I don't know. I had so many favorite. I don't know. I never can choose. I'm not a chooser. <laughs> pick, pick two. I want to. I want to know two of your favorite moments. I think. I don't know. Daddy's look at Arenda was <laughs> amazing. Dad's side eye. <laughs> yeah, he gave her some side eye, and she just went, "Sorry, Dad." <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but I don't know if that's my favorite. I don't know. This was definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. The whole fruition of like, and I think Eli, 
going okay. to the ascendancy, actually seeing him. Because when I saw the spoiler, it was he has his own, you know, has his own thing that he's doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like, it's a big deal, blah, blah, blah. But oh, so you didn't even know that it was the Chiss Ascendancy? No. Oh, I, okay. I cut out, I, I, I like left as soon as I saw anything. But I knew that mm -hmm. he lived and I knew that he did very, very well. Yeah. So, well, you played it very well like he died the whole time. So thank you for that. No, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't. You make assumptions. <laughs> and I went, <laughs> uh, I mean, the stress on that. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no Wikipedia for you. That's true. <laughs> we almost have to kind of like ban it from now on. Just like, no Wikipedia. Stay off Wikipedia. Stay off Wikipedia. <laughs> Which can't happen because, I mean, we have to make shows. So <laughs> we have to fact check, guys. <laughs> So cool. So um, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any anything else that we may have missed. I'm trying not to make my book go. <laughs> That's okay. It's an authentic noise. So <laughs> you, you don't hear that anymore on like tablets and phones and things like that. <laughs> you, you get the, the digital swish. But um, I liked when the emperor, he's talking to the emperor and... Mm -hmm. He's very proud of oh, yeah. Thrawn for killing all those people, a whole island full of people. Because mm -hmm. Thrawn got the good and yeah. out of that one. Naturally, Mr. Naturally. Order 66. Right. <laughs> and um, Thrawn's like, really? I don't think it was that great of a thing, actually. Mm -hmm. And... You know, the look on the Emperor's face. When it, I know, I keep saying the look on people's faces. I see the <laughs> look on people's faces. No, I hear you, though. Yeah. Anyway, the look on his face was like, oh. Hmm. <laughs> you know? Exactly. Like, <laughs> I love that he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Emperor. Mm -hmm. Like, he didn't just, oh, my master, da-da-da, yeah. fawn, and all that kind of stuff over him. Like, he actually was, he was thronged. He, was he didn't change. Yeah, he was Thrawn. He was strong. He was like, it wasn't that great. We lost yeah. a lot of people. Yeah. And the Emperor's just like, okay, moving on. Yeah. <laughs> and then I like that he uh, he met Lord Vader for the first time and didn't couldn't do, even he was trying to read him. That was awesome. Where he, he was like, you can't see anything through the mask. The armor kind of hides body motion. Yeah. And the voice is very mechanical, like literally just stoic. He's like, well, I'm not going to know who this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> it was almost like he was just looking at a machine, pretty much is how it seemed like it was described, which I thought was really cool. So I, I do, too. I thought it was really cool, too. I wonder if Filoni will pull out the stops and bring Vader back in uh, season four as well. I think he will. I think he will. It's going to be a big season. It is. I'm so sad to see it go. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so do you have anything else we want to add or anything like that? Not. I can't think of anything else. I think we got it, all of it. I think we did. Cool. So you want to talk a little bit about our next, um, our next Holocron Club? If you want to, we decided. Sure. Well, I took the dust cover off because I always do. <laughs> Let's see, I have like 50 books down here. Nope, that's Rogue One. <laughs> Catalyst. I told you, I really You only got a couple, right? <laughs> okay, here we are. Here we are, people. The Force. the Force Awakens! And I've just cracked it open for the first time. And the very first line is, she needed him. Mm. There you go. There you go. And uh, it's going to be epic. Oh, yeah. It definitely is. And it read before The Last Jedi comes out. Definitely. Cause, and, and from what you and I have talked about, and if you've listened to our other shows, um, which if you haven't, check out KesselRunWeekly.com. <laughs> uh, but 
in our other shows, I mean, we've talked a couple times about your insight into the book and everything, how things play out sometimes a little bit different, sometimes a little bit more in depth. Um, I personally have not read a canon movie book, um, the actual episodes. I've, I've never read one of those. I started Attack of the Clones like a long forever time ago, but I don't remember a thing about it. <laughs> so we'll probably come to that one eventually. It, um, we will. And it's, yeah. it's amazing. So. Oh, definitely. Um, but yeah, so we're doing Force Awakens before leading up to The Last Jedi, um, which will be really cool. So, and, and already I can already tell you because before we decided to do this, I had actually gotten a, a free Audible credit. Um, not trying to advertise or anything, but just say so I got a free Audible they credit. Want to pay us or something. I mean, we're open. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm down. Amazon Audible, call me. Uh, anyway, a free Audible credit. I know, right? Um, but I had gotten, uh, I decided to go with the Force Awakens audiobook because uh, I was wondering, I was like, well, I wonder how much different it is. Um, the way that the book opens up is completely different from the movie, which is really, really, really cool. Um, Ray is a little bit different um, in some of her decisions that I've seen so far. I haven't gotten very far, but just a little bit. I mean, there's already differences. Like, I is feel like I'm watching. Or different... is it like really more in depth? You just don't see that part of her. Uh, I can't say <laughs> with that. <laughs> uh, well, it'll, it's spoilers. Uh, no, you better and, not and, spoiler. and we know your position on spoilers. <laughs> uh, so I, I can't say, but you, you'll, you'll know when you get there, you'll know when you get there. Cause it shocked me. And I was just like, okay. Didn't expect that, but all right. <laughs> so, so yeah, so it, I'm really excited to start it, uh, start doing the, uh, for our book club, mm -hmm. The Force Awakens. Very, very excited about it. Um, we fully intend on having it done by The Last Jedi, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe we'll get some insight into The Last Jedi really by diving into the book. Some, yeah, I really want to get in the book and get it finished before the movie because, and then you rewatch the movie and, mm -hmm. yeah. That's oh, what yeah. I always do before a new movie. <laughs> I mean, you got to. You got to keep I it fresh, mean, man. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, so, yeah, so a lot of exciting stuff. Um, and in addition to that, um, I know Heather and I have also talked about uh, we're going to do the Darth Vader comic series uh, here soon. So we haven't done it yet because I know we said in, in a previous episode that we were going to do that as our, our book club. We are going to do that. Um, it'll probably be like a little mini episode of some kind of uh, right. thing. But... Um, we're wanting to wait for at least five issues because uh, right now it's up to issue three, I think is the latest one um, before this episode airs uh, late uh, episode or the issue three <laughs> of the Darth Vader comic. It's really cool so far, but I don't think that there's the story is quite complete enough for us to do an episode on. Right. Um, and we want to really be able to dive in because uh, we love Vader. Definitely Vader fans. <laughs> uh, Anakin as well. So a, a lot of cool stuff in it and everything. So we definitely will be doing that. Um, a lot of cool stuff coming up. So definitely stay tuned, guys, yeah. for sure. Do you want to tell them where they can find us? Well, well, well. Let's well. See if I can see it. <laughs> find us at com. We are also on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, and Tumblr at Kessel Run Weekly. And, uh, yeah, a lot of places. You could pretty a lot much of places. Just, you could also Google Kessel Run Weekly, and we're going to come up. Oh, definitely. Near and the and, top. <laughs> and Heather, where can they find our episodes? <laughs> oh, on Podbean or oh, on Podbean? iTunes. Yeah. yeah, iTunes, Google Play, Podbean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think those are the ones. Right? Yeah, that's it. That's and then our mysterious Danny, player FM. Yeah, that's why <laughs> Danny usually does this part. <laughs> you did fine. Yeah. But anyways, um, but yeah, guys, so we're literally everywhere. So just Google us. Google. We'll be there for you. Yeah. And talk <laughs> um, to us because we want to talk to definitely. you. We love talking to you. Um, we've had a lot of cool conversations on Instagram and Facebook. Um, met our friend Elizabeth Yay. through Facebook. So. Elizabeth, thank you for being our first book clubber. Uh, we really appreciate you joining in us. Um, but yeah, we've had a lot of cool conversations with a lot of new people and everything, uh, a lot of guests. 
Um, we've got some cool interviews coming up uh, in the next few weeks. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. If you like Facebook, find it on Facebook. If you like Instagram, find it on Instagram or Twitter. You get the idea. <laughs> so cool, guys. So are you ready to wrap this up? I am. Cool. All right, guys. So until next time, my name is Danny. I'm Heather. And may the force be with you.